There's only one thing better than dreaming about fishing in Missouri, and that's getting out there and doing it. Deciding where to fish in Missouri is easy. There are lots of choices, streams, sloughs, rivers, ponds, and reservoirs. They're all out there, all waiting. More than 200 species of fish thrive in Missouri waters. Fish like bowfin, crappie, and catfish. You'll find others like paddlefish, too. With so much variety, you'll get many fine meals and even more fishing pleasure. Over here, let's get those started. Hey, we'll them down right there. Okay. Whether you're camped along an Ozark stream or gliding on its surface, fishing in Missouri draws you outdoors for the best of times. You like being out here, don't you? Yeah. Okay, Ben, you got a good spot there. Let's see what you can catch. Hey, you got something on there, bud. Reel it in. What you... Oh! <laughs> Bring him up. Slow, slow, don't break him off. Take it slow. Look at that fish, would you? Look at that fish, son. Oh, <laughs> looky there. Boy, that's a dandy. Oh, they don't come much better than that. Oh, that made it all worthwhile right there. Smallmouth and rock bass aren't the only rewards hidden in Ozark streams. Gigging suckers is a long-time tradition. Try this root wad over here, Bob. Okay, looks good. It's changed from the early days, but still going There's strong. Dandy. on the potatoes tonight. Well, good. I'll tell you what, fellas, this looks like the last of the fish, so help yourself. Sounds you good to me. One more. Thank you, sir. Suckers, boy, there you can't beat them out here on a gravel bar like tonight. They are good. Yeah. I don't yeah, know. Who scored those up anyway? I scored those. Well, you so did a any good job. Up, you can blame me. Okay, well, no complaints. Those are just fixed just right. They are good. Don't yeah, they are. Right don't fry them. <laughs> Yeah, and I was glad to see you guys bring suckers back instead of that other rough edge. Yeah. yeah but these are the, really the good ones. These are good. Oh, Our grandparents oh, used to sit here on the old Ozark streams and do the very same thing we're doing tonight, except our equipment's a little more sophisticated than theirs is. Yeah, you know, my grandpa used to talk about using pine knots as a light to dig by. Yeah, not only pine knots, think of the gigging equipment they had. Think of the boat, oh. no motor, a push pole to push up and down the stream. 
They'd built uh, their own gigging lights because they didn't have anything else. They'd take them an old piece of metal and bend it around and get pine knots because they burned real good and real yeah. bright, and they'd gig with those. It's just amazing. Well, it's an Ozark tradition. It's something that's been handed down from generations. Native fish like bass and suckers are only a few of the attractions in the cool waters of the Ozarks. Since trout were first brought to Missouri in the late 1800s, they've captured the interest of thousands of anglers. It's hard to say exactly what makes trout so popular. Maybe it's because you find them in natural spring-fed streams, or because their picky eating challenges a fly tire's imagination, or maybe it's just that they move like quicksilver. Since rainbow and brown trout don't reproduce well on their own in Missouri, they're raised in cold water hatcheries and stocked in trout parks and other streams. But great fishing depends on more than just adding them to the water. You have to be sure there's good habitat for the trout. Plenty of places to hide and stay cool on a hot summer's day. Improving the streams and setting limits on the fish taken help the trout live longer and grow larger. Special trout management areas are stocked several times a year. At these more remote streams, you can really get away from it all and enjoy the fun of catching a larger fish and releasing it for another day. For those who like fishing shoulder to shoulder, there's always the March 1st opener at the trout parks. It's a celebration of the start of trout season and the hope, however distant, of the spring to come. Since fishing pressure is intense at the trout parks, the conservation department stocks trout each evening during the March through October season. As waters warm to those magic temperatures that draw fish from the deep, boats scatter across the big reservoirs in the state. I've got one. Good deal. Really mean Crappie, that. bass, walleye, and a muskie now and then bring lots yeah. of excitement to all kinds of anglers. It's going to be close. Hey, girls. Just one or two more, and I think we can head it towards home. Yeah, I think I got one. I do. You do have one. Boy, you, you have all the luck. Yeah. Let me net him for you. Uh -huh. Bring him in here. Oh, that's the big cluster. Got him? There you go, Amy. That's a good one. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is the I hope so. Let me check him here real quick. And okay. Yep. He's a keeper. Oh, good. Gosh. <laughs> hey, got one, Bill. All right. I think it's a good thing. All right. Careful research on the fish and what it takes to make them thrive have helped oh, conservation yeah. biologists and managers turn the reservoirs into prime opportunities for anyone with a hook and a line and a little know-how. Limiting the catch to certain sizes helps to keep the fish population strong. Catching and releasing fish is another way to help more people enjoy the sport. Well, yesterday we fished back in coves like this, some of these side channel points, and we fished 18 to 25 foot deep and didn't do very well. Today, I think we're gonna go out around here on Main Lake 
and fish some of these points that break off into the river channel, some of these points. By taking the time to study the structure of a lake, you can turn random luck into real success at predicting where you'll find the fish. Walleye. It's time to start catching walleye on this lake. Oh, got him. Got him. Good fish. Good fish. Good fish. Hey, good fish. The paddlefish, or spoonbill, is an ancient type of fish found as fossils over 65 million years old. Since their native rivers were dammed, paddlefish no longer reproduce well in Missouri. Now they're raised in hatcheries, added to reservoirs, and helped by limits on the size and numbers of the fish taken. Like sharks, their boneless bodies get strength from cartilage. But unlike sharks, the paddlefish eat only microscopic creatures which they filter from the water. Since they aren't interested in bait, they're caught by snagging. Like the paddlefish itself, Otter Slough echoes an ancient world. From the air, it looks like a wet forest in a field of rice. Once you're within its borders, though, you travel in another time, another place. Nice and quiet on the old slough. It's a chance to experience what used to be the vast, swampy lowlands of southeast Missouri with waters rich in bullfin, pickerel, flyer, and crappie and bluegill, too. Otter Slough is a place protected, bought by Missourians to conserve now and for the future. You don't need to go far from home to relax outdoors. Urban lakes give lots of people a chance to get away from it all right in the city. Bullhead, carp, and channel catfish are all stocked and managed by the Department of Conservation in more than 30 urban lakes in our large cities. have a limit of up to six fish. Once you put the sixth fish on your uh, stringer, then you can't fish anymore. Now, if you want to continue to fish, you put five fish on Fishing your stringer. Fishing clinics held throughout the summer introduce new generations to the fun of a line and a hook and a wiggling worm. Because the most likely fish you're going to catch today is the bullhead. And we want you to learn okay. about the limit. Boy, he's doing good, isn't he? Yeah, he's doing real good. Bring it in. He's got it, catfish. <laughs> Woo! Finally, I caught one. I caught one. 
If you live in the country and own a pond, chances are the conservation department has helped to stock it with bass, bluegill, and channel catfish. He's a biggie. Uh -oh. <laughs> Oh, it's a bigger one. Here's a giant bluegill. Landowners can also get tips on how to manage the ponds for better fishing for themselves and their chosen guests. The prairie streams of North Missouri wind their way past farm after farm. Catfish and drum loll in the water as fishing lines are cast hopefully in their direction. We usually put in a trot line and, you know, depending if we usually have friends with us and maybe they'll put in a trot line, we'll have a couple trot lines in and we go run those about every two or three hours and especially of a night and uh, then come back and just fish with a rod off the bank. And, Oh, sometimes when down here and we spend the whole weekend down here and fish and just camp out and, and uh, lots of times it seems like the moon will just set right up in there and just shine off the river and it's just beautiful down here every night. The big rivers, the Missouri and the Mississippi, draw anglers to their shores and out in boats for the harvests they hold. Whether it's just the pleasure of being near a wide expanse of water or of hauling in a big blue catfish, who can say? Whatever it is, those who fish the big rivers know they hold something unique for anyone who ventures near. Keep your eye on that right rod. He's working on it. I'm going to cross his eyes. Get him? Got him. If we get us a shot at him, we don't want to muff it. We may only get one. Now he's going down. You better raise that motor. He's going around the back side of the boat. He's a mule. He's going back down. Watch him. Get that net back. He don't like it. There he is. Hey, Got his way to go, partner. That's what we're looking for, right there. Way to go. I believe he'd go 35, 40 pounds. At least that much or more. and reservoirs make all kinds of fishing possible in Missouri. A good conservation program and people who support it keep the resource strong. So why wait? Grab your gear and head outdoors. Fishing in Missouri is just a castaway.